A lot of people were happy that a trans actor was hired to play a trans character in this show. You know, that is something that has been discussed more recently. I don't really know what I stand on that. About, you know, I just having, you know, actors play characters that their sexuality is based off of. Like, oh, gay character has to play a um, gay actor has to play a gay character. I don't know where I really stand on that. Because I, it's just acting. I think the only things that do matter is like, Black Panther obviously has to be black. Because of his background, his story. But, you know, stuff like Spider-Man, Batman, doesn't matter what their race is. But then when it comes to acting, it's it's considered debatable. I don't know. Anyways, um, I really liked Two-Face from what we did see of him, but... Aaron Eckhart is still better because he literally had one scene as Two-Face. Technically two. But the other one is just like, you can kind of see his scars and he points a gun and shoots. And then that's the scene. And then the other scene is a full-on scene where he gets his revenge. Though it's pretty short. And that's it. The makeup was really good. But unfortunately, we will not see Two-Face return because... The show has been canceled unless they back out of that, which sometimes studios do. It did happen with Superman and Lois, where it was canceled after season three, but apparently they are going to make a season four now. Um, Joker and Batman's son dating thing felt pretty, pretty obvious that they were going to go for that. Like, just the library scene, there wasn't exactly chemistry or romantic tension yet but I was like this is definitely a scene where they're gonna kiss they didn't but I was like don't kiss don't kiss because I thought that would be such a cliche dumb thing but then I ended up actually kind of liking the couple for like the two seconds they were together it was basically just them having a one night stand and then they go to a bar together and now they're broken up it's kind of dumb they also have Stephanie, um, Kiss Turner, in the same fucking episode that, um, she tries to tell Harper that she doesn't like him because she sees him like a brother. I, it didn't look like she was lying. Didn't sound like she was lying. Maybe just poor acting on her part, but it seemed like she legitimately saw him as his brother and then... In the same fucking episode, she's kissing him. And then she's like, well, um, I just thought I would feel something. But I don't. So I guess she's a lesbian, but they don't actually say it. They do say Harper is bi. Which is obvious because she dates, um, um, Stephanie. And they make a bunch of references about her dating other women. Though, um, Stephanie, they don't really say what her sexuality is, which they don't have to. But, yeah, I don't know if she cheated on her boyfriend or if she dumped him or what, because I seriously don't remember her ever breaking up with him. And then they also have, like, this big thing about him apologizing to Turner because he was mean to him in, like, what, the fucking first episode? I fucking forgot about that shit almost until he brought it up. Like, he was like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry for... Um, being rude to you all the time. And I was like, you made like one comment in the very first episode. The series is almost over. We're like, what, 11, 12 episodes in? And you're apologizing to him for the thing that probably everybody fucking forgot about? (laughs) Like, come on. Who fucking remembered that random thing? I will say, I have not played the Gotham Knights video game. It's not connected to this. But, out of all the Court of Owls things I've seen so far, this is definitely the best one. It's not very good, but it's the best one. Batman vs. Robin, they get betrayed by a dude with a very poor motive. And every single one of them gets killed by one dude. 
and they never kill Batman. They get close with some shitty clones, but they disappear before they can kill him. In this, they kill Batman. Though I do think the way they kill him is kind of stupid. They could have made it better. I'm not one of those, well, Batman with prep time fanboys, though I am a pretty big Batman fan. Um, I think it was kind of dumb. They say that he was slowly being poisoned by one he trusts. How the fuck did he not notice? Like, I'm not even saying that he had to notice her putting the poison in his food. Because she was slowly doing it. Days. Days. The world's greatest detective couldn't fucking notice that his reflexes were getting slower. Because that is one of the things they mentioned. They were drugging and poisoning him. So his reflexes would be slower so they could kill him easier. You're telling me. The dude that fights every fucking day. Every fucking day at night, no matter how much, how injured he is, how many scars he has, how many broken bones he has, he, he always has to fight, unless Alfred holds him back, and that is what happens all the time in the comics, because I read a lot of Batman comics, but he tries to fight no matter how injured he is, but, you know, he's, he's going to be fighting every day. Every day. And you're telling me he's not going to realize his reflexes are getting slower every day. How? That's my only problem. The poisoning thing could have worked because it was a close friend that did it. It was someone he trusted. It was someone he hired. Though Batman never fully trusts someone, obviously he would trust his maid or whatever the fuck she was. I honestly don't remember what she was to cook his food. So if she slipped poison in there one time, very lethal poison, he was fucked up, stumbling around, and then the court of owls just show up and kill him. The end. It works. But her drugging him for maybe weeks, because they never state how long. They just state she was doing it, like, a long time. And she kept doing it every day until he his reflexes were terrible. And the way they were able to sneak up on him was because of a secret floor that even he didn't know about. Though, children were able to stumble upon it. Once again, kind of doesn't work for the world's greatest detective. His costume was also kind of fucking shitty. They really only showed a mask, but it looks fucking cheap. Gotham's costume, as much as it was shit on, that Batman costume was... All right for me. It was a better costume. Though that show also did that costume in the fifth and final season. So they were making bank by that time. This show had one season. But, you know, I think it's a pretty dumb way to kill Batman. It does make it at least bearable since, you know, the whole... they never He never saw them coming because it was a secret floor. But at the same time, it's still stupid. How does he not realize his reflexes are getting weaker when he's someone that fights every day? Doesn't make sense. He can't tell me that makes sense. And Joker's daughter twists, unfortunately. I did get that spoiled, so obviously spoiler warning. Joker's daughter is actually Harvey Dent's daughter. That he made when... You know, there's like some confusing thing with Two-Face that I don't even really want to get into. But, yeah, he he's his real father, her real father. Which is actually what happens in the comics. I knew of Joker's daughter, but I didn't really know anything about her. I just knew she existed. So, yeah, they actually stayed loyal to the comics, which doesn't really happen often in movies and TV shows nowadays, but I really don't know how I feel about it personally. So, yeah, she's not actually Joker's daughter or whatever. Um, Harper Rowe was fine, but you know, also most of these characters I just couldn't really get into. They never stuck on them long enough. And then when we start to see at least some more personality with them, 
they bring in fucking Stephanie's little friend and start having him be a part of the group and giving him more screen time. I I just really don't know what they were doing with this show. And they got the dude from Supernatural to play Two-Face, though I've never seen that show. I've heard it's really popular, so I'm surprised he was on this show. Um, they also have a beheading, not once but twice. Which doesn't happen too often in TV 14 shows. Just gave it that Gotham feel because Gotham got away with a lot of violent shit. And it was only TV 14. Um, I think that's about it. <laughs>